Hi everyone, this is Dr. V. Din from Loma Linda University School of Medicine. And in this lecture, we're going to go over lower extremity DVT ultrasound. So, when you encounter a patient with a swollen leg, either unilateral or bilateral, um, the differential is always going to be, um, uh, does this patient have a blood clot or not? And in general, you're trying to differentiate between cellulitis versus DVT or other types of things that can cause edema, such as a CHF or venous insufficiency. But for the purposes of this talk, we're going to focus on deep vein thrombosis of the lower extremity and how to make the diagnosis with ultrasound. Using bedside ultrasound, the studies have showed that it can take around three to four minutes to complete a two to three point um, ultrasound scan of the lower extremity using compression. This is different from a formal ultrasound, which usually takes about 30 minutes or 40 minutes, and they scan the entire leg from the common femoral vein all the way down to the popliteal. And we're going to teach you two or three points um, uh, ultrasound in this series. Regarding the probe that you're going to use, in general you're going to use the linear probe because the veins are pretty superficial and in general this is this can be used sometimes you might use a curvilinear probe but that's very very rare and that's more for patients that are um, more obese or slightly bigger and you can't penetrate enough with the linear probe uh, like with all of our other applications we've been using you want to make sure you select the correct preset every machine is a little bit different uh, you can just choose venous setting and the indicator on the transducer is always going to be towards the patient's right side in order to orient yourself. How to patient, uh, position the patient? <clears throat> so there was a study done and they found that when you frog leg the patient, and we'll explain that what that means in a bit, um, it increases the femoral vein size by about 2 millimeters and it also decreases the vein depth about 2 millimeters. And these are both advantageous for ultrasound because it makes the vein bigger and it brings the vein closer to your field of vision so it optimizes it. So how do you frog leg a patient? So basically this patient's frog legged here. You see that their hip is externally rotated, their knee is flexed. Sometimes you can put a pillow right underneath their knee um, to make them a little bit more comfortable. And you can see here it really opens up that area you're going to scan as well as the knee or underneath the knee when you do the popliteal vein. So for the femoral vein you're going to scan right where the inguinal, inguinal canal is, about the, the middle of the inguinal canal. And usually that's where the common femoral vein is. You can start there. And what you see is we put gel all across the leg so that as you scan down, you don't have to keep applying gel. So first is the common femoral vein. And as you slide down further, you're going to uh, eventually count in the superficial femoral vein. And you will end off with the palpiteal vein. The patient's already frog-legged, so it's really easy for you to transition and just look for that palpiteal vein. So in general, the anatomy <clears throat> is vein artery nerve with the vein being medial and the nerve being lateral. So proximal DVT, the definition of it is anything that causes a blood clot from the popliteal vein and above or proximal. There's three techniques that you can use, but we're really only going to cover compression. We'll introduce the other two um, uh, just briefly. However, I don't recommend using color Doppler and augmentation on a routine basis. The studies have shown that compression is uh, by far superior to the other two methods. But we'll still go over the other ones so you can see what that looks like. And the formal studies, when they do a, a complete study, they will do color Doppler and augmentation as well. So for color Doppler, basically you're going to put the color Doppler on the vein and artery. So here we can see here's the artery right here, and here's the vein more medially. Augmentation is very simple. See right there, the you augment by squeezing the calf and uh, producing blood flow back towards the heart and this causes the vein to, and you put color flow on, on this obviously, and this causes um, you to detect flow uh, into the vein with your uh, active augmentation. This is kind of like a home end sign, but using ultrasound. 
So one of the complications of this, obviously, is if they have a large clot, you can dislodge it. So it's not generally recommended that you do augmentation um, uh, just for that purpose. So compression is where we really want to focus on. This is what you should get good at doing is compression. So when they studied it, they looked at if you only use vein compression, um, when you compare it to other modes such as uh, color Doppler augmentation, compressibility has a 100% sensitivity for a proximal DVT. So there really a, is no you know, ad, advantage of using other methods. Um, color Doppler in this study did not detect any additional proximal calf uh, or proximal DVT or calf DVT compared to just regular compression. So how much pressure should you apply when you're doing these studies? So in general, the amount of pressure you should apply, so here's the vein right here as we're compressing it. And if you notice the artery here, we're compressing it just to the point where it starts to indent a little bit, but not all the way. So when you start collapsing the artery, then the vein should be totally collapsed. So if the vein is not, not compressible, despite you being able to compress the artery, that means that vein is non-compressible. So the sequence, how to perform this study. Um, I like to go from proximal to distal. Here's the example of the right leg. So you start the inguinal canal like we talked about right in the middle. At that point you want to locate the common femoral artery and the common femoral vein. And the first thing you'll see is the common femoral vein is obviously going to be medial and the common femoral artery is going to be lateral. And you compress and you should see it fully compressible. So here's an example of that. So here's the common femoral vein and here's the common femoral artery. And you can see that this vein is compressible, fully compressible. As you slide down the probe more distally, about one to two centimeters, you're going to see the junction of the common femoral vein and the saphenous vein. So the saphenous vein is considered a superficial vein. However, we still scan for the saphenous vein sometimes because there might be a clot right at the junction between the saphenous vein and the common femoral vein, and that can eventually lead to a deep vein thrombosis. So in general, um, if I can, I'll try to look for the saphenous vein also. Not mandatory, but it's nice to look for. And this is what it looks like. So you see it coming right off the medial side of the vein right here. And if you scan a little bit more distally, probably about two, three centimeters, um, what happens is the common femoral vein splits into the superficial femoral vein and the deep femoral vein. And if you look at the diagram, the superficial femoral vein is usually anterior to the deep femoral vein. Um, and eventually the deep femoral vein will dive off and disappear. And you can continue to follow the, the superficial femoral vein. And obviously you want to compress both of them and uh, make sure they're compressible. So it might be a little bit misleading, even though it's called a superficial femoral vein, it is still considered a deep vein. So if you have a clot there, it's still considered a deep vein thrombosis. So just make sure you're not confused by the nomenclature. And this is what a superficial femoral vein looks like right here is a superficial femoral vein. You can see it right there. And here's a deep femoral vein just underneath artery right here okay. and some and every patient is a little bit different so their anatomy might be a little bit different but you should see two separate veins one anterior and one posterior um, and that identifies the superficial and deep femoral veins and as you keep sliding um, you can keep following the superficial femoral vein and it'll eventually disappear as it dives into the knee to become the popliteal vein so, but once again, you know, at the minimum, you should look for the common femoral vein. And if you can, you can look for the saphenous vein and the superficial femoral vein also. But getting that common femoral vein is probably going to be the biggest bang for your buck. And eventually you'll, after the superficial femoral vein disappears, you're going to look for the popliteal vein. And basically you're going to put that probe right in the popliteal crease. Um, and just remember this little saying that the pop is on top, meaning the palpiteal vein is on top of the palpiteal artery on the ultrasound screen. And as you, you should be able to compress it. 
So you can scan about two centimeters above and below the popliteal crease in order to find the popliteal vein. Sometimes it's a little bit hard, but what I've found is if you just do it right in the center of the popliteal crease, um, in general, you should be able to find it. Don't push too hard sometimes because maybe there is a vein there, but you're just compressing it so hard that it flattens out and you don't even see it. So here's what it looks like. So here's a popliteal vein on top right here, and here's a popliteal artery. And you can see as you compress, it's fully compressible. And just remember the pop is on top. You can scan a little bit more distally to where the popliteal vein trifurcates. Um, here's the popliteal veins at three, and then also the popliteal arteries. So this is also optional, um, but when they're doing a formal scan, they do scan all the way to the popliteal vein trifurcation. But if you can see the popliteal vein, it's compressible. Uh, for your purposes, it should be uh, okay. So here's some abnormal scans. So let's look at the common femoral vein first. And here you can see that this is the artery here, common femoral artery. Here is the common femoral vein. And there's actually a clot inside the common femoral vein that is just kind of loosely hanging out. And you can see, or you know, possibly that if you try to do augmentation, that increased blood flow to this um, clot might dislodge it and cause a pulmonary embolism. So I wouldn't recommend uh, augmentation in this patient. But if you see a clot, obviously that's good enough. Um, but you, you can compress it. Um, don't compress too hard on this patient because this might also dislodge that clot. So here's another one. So here's the artery, here's the vein right here. And you can see, once again, you can probably see the clot, but when you try to compress it, it's indenting the artery here, but this vein is not collapsing at all. This patient has a complete clot in this vein right here. Here's another example, a little bit more subtle, but you see that we're indenting this artery and this common femoral vein is not compressing all the way. So this is also an example. Uh, and sometimes you won't see the clot. So that's why compressibility is so important because um, you know if you just because you don't see a clot in there doesn't mean that there might not be a clot in there and that's why you compress it um, to make sure that uh, it's compressible and if it's not you have to assume that there's a clot there here's another example with color flow you see the vein or the the vein here here's the artery here's a large clot in the vein and you're putting color flow in to see is there complete occlusion or not and there is, it's not complete occlusion, but it's almost completely occluded. Um, and you can see a little bit of flow going in the posterior portion of the vein. So once again, you slide down um, and you're going to look for the saphenous vein now that comes off medially. And here's an example of what we were talking about before. Here's the common femoral vein. And here's the saphenous vein as it comes into the common femoral vein. And there's a clot within the saphenous vein that's kind of hanging out right at that junction. And you can see that it's creeping into the common femoral vein. So I would consider this a DVT, um, even though it's originating from the superficial or the saphenous vein. And here's the artery over here. You can put some color flow through that too. And once you see scans, you see how large this um, saphenous vein clot is over here encroaching into the to the uh, common femoral vein. And as you slide a little bit more distally, you're gonna look for that superficial femoral vein. Um, and here's an example of that. You don't see the deep femoral vein in this, in this study right here. Um, but in general, the superficial femoral vein will eventually go posterior to the artery. It doesn't, it's not really lateral to the artery. It, so it starts to dive from lateral, sorry, medial to uh, posterior as you go more distal. And here you can see that we're Compressing the artery and the superficial femoral vein is non-compressible. You can actually see the clot in there also. So once again, that's considered DVT. Here's another example, a little bit more proximal, where the superficial femoral vein hasn't dived posteriorly to underneath that artery yet. And once again, you see non-compressible vein here right next to the artery. Here's an uh, example using color flow. You see color flow in the artery, but no color flow here. You can actually see the echogenicity, the grayish echogenicity that looks like a clot. Um, and as you scan, um, the superficial femoral vein disappears, and you're going to go to the popliteal vein. Remember, the pop is on top. 
and here you can see example of here's a palpiteal vein right here and here's the artery and you can see as you try to compress this vein is non compressible while this artery right here is basically almost fully compressed with non compression here so there's a DVT in the popliteal vein there so like we talked about before you know I showed you kind of the the progression from common femoral vein all the way down to the popliteal trifurcation um, this study, they looked at a two-point ultrasound, basically just looking at the common femoral vein and the popliteal vein, and they found that when you combine that with D-dimer, it's just as good as a whole leg um, color-coded uh, Doppler ultrasound. Um, so, uh, you know, we don't always order D-dimers on all of our patients w with suspicions for DVT, um, but for your purposes for screening, I think that doing a two-point exam just to get the common femoral vein and popliteal vein is adequate. And if you have time or interest, then you can always look at you know where the saphenous vein is, the superficial femoral vein, um, looking for the popliteal vein trifurcation. Um, but at the minimum, look for the common femoral vein and just the popliteal vein, uh, and that will at least screen most almost all of your patients uh, adequately. Just an example of a false positive, sometimes patients can have Baker's cysts in, the, in their popliteal area, and that's uh, gonna be false positive for um, DVT, obviously. So um, just be aware of that. So just in summary, um, you know, you could use two or, so when they, call, when they say three-point ultrasound, that's considered a common femoral vein, superficial femoral vein, and a popliteal, um, popliteal vein. Um, you can use that or just look for the common femoral in the popliteal. Uh, use compression. That's going to be the standard of care. Um, and if you want to, you can use color Doppler and be very cautious with augmentation. And um, in general, it's a good screening exam, but you do want to follow up with a formal ultrasound um, uh, unless you're really confident with your study. Um, just talk to your resident or attending to make sure that um, what to, to come up with a joint decision with uh, the patient and the, and the faculty member to see if a formal ultrasound is also necessary. All right, thank you very much.